long time ago, folks just got fired instead of being re-engineered or reassigned or downsized, or like my friend Jeff here likes to say, de-suited. Man Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and especially our guests, I'm going to tell you a story my granddaddy used to tell about a man who showed up on his porch one day looking for a mule. But I guess I'll start back at the beginning. There was this fellow in St. Louis who got kind of persnickety with his boss one day. Before he knew it, he found himself out on the street. He had found himself a new line of work. Well, he was tired of the hustle and bustle of city life, so he decided to go out west and start himself a farm. He packed up the wife and kitties and they hightailed it on out to Kansas. And the first thing they noticed in Kansas is there weren't no trees. Well, how does a fellow build a house around here, he asked. He said, well, most folks around here find themselves a hillside, and they dig back into it, form three walls, get a bunch of mud blocks to build the front wall, and throw some thatch on the top, and they got themselves a nice little house. Well, this is Greenhorn's wife kind of got this funny look on her face. And she says, well, yeah, but how do you heat the house and how do you cook? I said, well, there aren't no trees around here, so, but there used to be thousands and thousands of buffalo in these parts, and there are buffalo chips all over the place. When they dry up, they make mighty fine fuel. We just go up and gather them up, and that's how we eat our homes and cook our food. Well, this city girl wasn't going to have no part of living in a hole in the ground or cooking her family food with no buffalo dung. And so they pushed on. They went on up into Nebraska. The fact it was just like Kansas. There were no trees. People were living in mud houses. That this ain't never going to do. So they moved on. They wanted up, on up into South Dakota. And when they reached the Black Hills, that was the prettiest one that they ever did see. There was plenty of trees up on the hillsides, acres and miles and miles of prairie that was just waiting to be plowed and planted. They thought, this is the place we're going to save. So they looked around, and they found themselves a parcel of land. First thing that farmer did is go up in the hills and start chopping down some trees and before you knew it, he had the nicest little log cabin you'd ever seen. It was a right comfortable place to live. But then Greenhorns, they didn't know what to do next. So they pondered a while. Finally, I said, well, maybe we ought to get ourselves a mule to help with the plowing. He said, well, that's a great idea. I'll just move the on down to the neighbors, see if he can tell us where we can find a mule. Well, this fellow started out walking. He walked for a mile, and pretty soon it was two miles, and then three miles, and then four miles. Finally, he spied my granddaddy's, great granddaddy's place up on a hill. And great granddaddy was sitting up there on the porch, just kicking back, watching the grass grow. Well, this fellow walked up and says, hey, mister, you know where I felt to get a meal around here? Well, my great granddaddy had pegged this man for a greenhorn before he ever opened his mouth. Now, that might have been on account of all the water dripping out from behind the fellow's ears. Then again, that might have just been sweat from the long walk. But nonetheless, my great granddaddy said he was going to have a little fun with this fellow. He said, well, you could go on into town and put an ad in the newspaper looking for a mule. But then you get a mule that's been raised by somebody else and they're all pretty persnickety and they don't do what you want them to do all the time. You could do what we do around here and raise yourself a mule from a mule egg. <laughs> <laughs> well, this greenhorn said, I didn't know mules came from eggs. Well, I sure they do, great granddaddy said. In fact, I haven't had one left over from the last batch of mules I raised and I'll sell it to you for a dollar. The young greenhorn says, well, that's a great idea. I'd be happy to have it. So great granddaddy goes out in the barn and he comes back out with this great big old brown hairy coconut. <laughs> so this here's a mule egg. Thing is, you got to sit on it night and day for a week before that mule <laughs> has. <laughs> well, 
Greenhorn takes this old mule he went home. He's all excited to show his wife and kids. Look at this. I got lots of mule egg. And they took turns sitting on that egg night and day for a week. But no mule. Well, they sat on that for another week. Still no mule. Well, after the third week of sitting on this coconut, their bottoms was getting mighty tired. They said, well, we must have got up a bad one. We'll have to throw this away, ask that farmer if we can get another one or get our money back anyway. So they went outside and they took that old coconut and he just tossed it off into the bushes. Well, about that time, the biggest old jackrabbit, you said, jumped out of the bushes and just looked my, this greenhorn right in the eye. Kitty said, Look, Daddy, there's the baby mule. Catch it. Catch it, Tom. <laughs> well, that jackrabbit took off a running, and this old farmer took off a running after it. And they were running this old jackrabbit was going this way and that way and hither and to, and the farmer was running after him trying to catch up with him. Finally, that rabbit just started down the hole and disappeared. Greenhorn collapsed on the ground. He was just exhausted. He was tired and went in their tent, and when his family finally caught up with him. That's why that stern meal got away. But I'm not so, glad, so unhappy that it did, because that's, that's the stern meal I ever did see, and I don't aim to pile that fast. <laughs> <laughs>